Welcome to this brief introduction to NERC SIP and NERC SIP compliance. This presentation will cover some background on NERC SIP and in particular applicability to alternative energy. This presentation was prepared by Volt Breach. We specialize in cybersecurity assessments tailored for renewable energy companies. NERC is the North American Electric Reliability Corporation. It has been around since 1968 but only in 2006 was it delegated regulatory powers in the United States by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission and in Canada by the individual provinces. However, it was in 2008 that FERC Order 706 required development of the SIP standards in response to identified shortcomings. This in turn triggered several years of regular updates to address cybersecurity weaknesses. 2009 through 2013 saw multiple quick revisions to SIP. Then in 2014, gunmen shot at an electricity transformer at the Metcalf station near San Diego, California, prompting the development of SIP 014. It's worth pointing out that the different revisions of SIP are noted by SIP dash in the version number, such as SIP 2, while different sections within SIP are referred to by SIP dash in zeros preceding the section number, such as SIP 002. While NERC is responsible as the regulatory body, they delegate several duties to regional councils. These organizations monitor, audit, and investigate bulk power system owners, operators, and users to ensure compliance with NERC reliability standards. They also perform training and education, entity registration and certification, and event analysis related to outages. It is important to work with each regional organization to ensure they know what assets are within their scope and also to get the latest briefings from them. SIP stands for Critical Infrastructure Protection. This set of standards covers both core and operational areas. The core standards are overarching rules for protecting critical infrastructure, while the operational standards address more of the day-to-day, -day, hands on procedures for cyber and physical security. Essentially, SIP002 through SIP006 establish what needs to be achieved, and SIP007 through SIP014 define how to achieve it. We also recommend that you look at the URL provided on the slide to review the next versions of the standards that have been filed and are pending approval or are already marked for future enforcement, as those will soon apply. For example, in June 2025, FERC approved SIP 015, requiring internal network security monitoring for all high impact BES cyber systems and for medium impact systems with external routable connectivity, ERC. This standard is currently listed as subject to future enforcement. In addition, within each standard, there is a section on applicability, generally section A.4. Review this section to see which standards do or do not apply to your assets. But the first question to answer about NERC SIT is if it applies to your assets and which ones. It clearly applies to bulk electric systems in North America. The main determination is whether the facility is considered part of the bulk electric system. This is defined as any organization, for example, a solar farm operator, generating an aggregate 20 megavolt amperes of electricity or greater. These organizations must register with NERC and comply with its standards. The May 2025 expansion of NERC SIP reduced the threshold from 75 to 20 MVA. This expansion means over 1,000 previously unregulated solar, wind, and battery sites must now register as generator owners or generator operators and meet extensive reporting, monitoring, and cybersecurity requirements. Also, regional operators can now nominate lower capacity or aggregated solar and battery sites to register if those facilities are deemed to pose grid reliability risks. 
Note that solar farms connected only to distribution systems and not part of transmission are generally not subject to NERC SIP unless otherwise nominated. So you may be asking yourself, if I follow IEC 62443, am I compliant with NERC SIP? Well, they're different beasts. IEC 62443 tends to be more of a broad framework, while NERC SIP is more prescriptive. For example, NERC SIP enforces strict controls for remote access, including session identification, monitoring, and prompt disabling of unauthorized or inactive connections. All of that is the responsibility of the asset owner. While IEC 62443's approach is more general best practice, with responsibility shared across vendors, owners, and integrators. Another example is how NERC SIP defines the Electronic Security Perimeter, ESP, and the External Routable Connectivity, ERC, models to explicitly identify and manage interconnecting BES cyber systems and external networks. It is a very top-down compliance-driven approach. IEC 62443 parallels this with zones and conduits, but a more of a bottom-up, asset-centric approach. In contrast, NERC SIP and IEC 62443 are very OT-focused, while the EU's NIS2 is applicable to both IT and OT. Think of the scope of NIS2 as more like NERC SIP and the NIST cybersecurity framework together. NERC SIP uses three impact ratings to determine requirements for applicable environments. Alternative energy producers are unlikely to fall under the high impact category. This category is subject to the full suite of SIP controls, such as advanced network segmentation, security management, incident response, and system integrity measures. These tend to be cyber systems at control centers or backup control centers that perform real-time operation control of the BES. Instead, alternative energy producers tend to fall under medium or low impact categories. Large substations over 500 MVA or generation resources above 1500 MVA fall under medium impact. These systems require intermediate level protection measures, such as access control monitoring, event logging, vulnerability assessments, and physical access protections. The low impact category is the catch-all for any BES cyber system not meeting high or medium impact criteria. They still require protective policies and basic electronic access and incident response measures, but with scaled control expectations. You should expect that future iterations of NERC SIP will strengthen controls for low impact environments. In many of the standards, Section B includes details on requirements. Each individual requirement will list whether it applies to high, medium, or low assets. In some cases, the requirements might also only apply to certain components for high or medium assets. The first step to compliance is to look at your facilities to determine their size. Do any individual resources generate greater than 20 MVA of power? Or do you deliver an aggregate 75 MVA? Or has a regional planning coordinator or transmission operator determined that your facilities have a material impact on BES reliability? If so, then you must contact the NERC regional entity to confirm registration and scope. The next step will be to follow SIP002 to develop an asset inventory and categorize assets to identify which assets are critical. Step three is to evaluate your organization against the core standards in SIP002 through SIP006. Identify any gaps for the oversight of critical assets. Then review the current controls for critical assets against applicable operational standards SIP 007 through SIP 015. Look at your existing cybersecurity and operational programs and identify how they can be enhanced to meet NERC SIP requirements. 
Steps four through eight deal with the implementation of control areas. This is where the hardest work is required due to the level of detail and implementation. And finally, ensure you're ready for your audit with all materials documented. Implement continuous monitoring of controls wherever possible. Regularly update cyber and physical security plans to align with the 2025 SIP roadmap. The Risk-Based Compliance Monitoring and Enforcement Program, or CMEP, can be used for annual review of controls, and there are regional workshops to help keep abreast of regulatory changes. Audits by regional entities are performed on a rolling three-year calendar. Entities must demonstrate compliance through both documentation and interviews, as well as spot checks. After an on-site audit, a draft audit report is issued with any potential violations identified. Where violations are found, this first triggers a Notice of Possible Violation, or NOPV, to the registered entity. The entity then has typically 30 business days to review and respond to the finding. If the finding stands, then this triggers financial penalties and a remediation workflow under NERC CMEP. An effective NERC SIP compliance program will address potential violations before they are identified in formal audit. And there are situations where it is better to self-report violations to the NERC regional entity, as this may reduce penalties. This concludes our presentation on NERC SIP compliance. Volpreach thanks you for your time and attention.